I had breast cancer five years ago now and I think after I'd had the breast cancer it's it's what they call a life-changing experience and I wanted in one sense something positive to come out of that and I felt I think because I had my life back that I wanted to give something back to the rest of the world if you like. Personally for me I thought I'd be ruled out because I'd had cancer and I thought a medical history like that would mean they wouldn't even consider us. But we went along to the meeting and they said, no, if you're fit and healthy now, then that's the primary consideration. I think the children were a little bit reticent at first. They were obviously nervous that this was a life-changing experience for them too. And they were a little bit concerned about how it would affect them in terms of having new people in the house. Short-term fostering can be anywhere up to two years you have the children for. They get placed not always on an emergency basis sometimes it can be a planned placement so you'll get a couple of days notice or even a week's notice to say that the children are going to move into your home which is lovely because you then get the opportunity if it's possible to meet the children beforehand the holiday respite we're doing at the moment and we've done quite a few of these over the course of the last year is respite for foster carers themselves when they're going away with their family at the end of the day a lot of foster carers it's a hard job and they do want to take a break with their own children so the foster children can go into respite. So we've got a young boy at the moment who's 18 months and he's been with us for two weeks so he'll stay with us as a member of our family until his normal foster care family come back. Boo! Can you do that? Boo! And again. Boo! You're very, very clever. Emergency fostering is usually when children have to be taken from their home quite quickly. So you might say, get a phone call in the middle of the night to say, we have a, a two year old as an example who needs a quick placement. And he'll arrive in that case in the middle of the night with usually very, very little. At the end of the day, when the children are living with you, you're treating them as a member of your family and you love them in exactly the same way that you loved your own children. And there's also a journal that we keep for the children, which is done every single night on a regular basis, which covers things like what have the children done during the day? What activities did they get up to? Any accidents or injuries, anything like that would go in there. There is a shortage of foster carers at the moment, and that's a national problem. Um, and we are hoping to recruit lots of more foster carers. Don't rule yourself out. You can be married, you can be single, you can be gay, you can be straight. As long as you have the love and potential to be a foster carer, then I suggest, you know, go along, go to a meeting, look at the process. I think one of the reasons people are put off is because they think they're going to be on their own and not have any support. But there's lots and lots of support available for foster carers now. When we were doing this, you were asking about the training courses. I was, yes. And yes, we've got so some got new ones, so I thought yes. we could have a look at them if that's okay. Yeah, that's brilliant. But it's, it's a really beautiful feeling, the fact that you've done so much good for this child while they've lived in your home, and you've been such a positive part of their lives. And it's something, even if they don't remember it, you know that you've done something fantastic. So if you're thinking about fostering, um, you're the sort of people that we're hoping to get. People who are understanding and have empathy and really have an insight into what children need. No other job loves you back the way foster caring does. There isn't another job you can name that gives you hugs and kisses. And that's what I love about foster caring.